What's up, guys? We're going to take the Hustler in today. The uh, Hustler is leaking again. You guys remember, it was like last November, um, the driver's side hydraulic was leaking all over the place. Anyway, it was just a big pain in the butt. So we have hardly put any hours on it since then, and it just started pouring on me the other day, and I just couldn't even get couldn't get the job done last Tuesday or this past Tuesday. It just really sucked. Um, so I ended up having to get a loaner mower. So I just took it back um, to where I had it, uh, you know, had the hoses replaced before. So they're going to take a look at that and um, see if we can get that fixed up. It's It's got 1,100 hours on it. And, you know, that's a lot of hours on a mower. But I don't think that that's, that's enough hours for hydro um, housings to be leaking. So... Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. It's the passenger side, the right side, um, hydro housing that is leaking. And I mean, it's not just leaking, man. That thing is like, you can see it coming out and running and it's like a little pool and it sucks, dude. So anyways, um, going to hopefully get that fixed. We're going to head out and I got to lift some trees up. I've got to... Yeah, we got to finish putting some plants in. I got to lift some trees up. Um, I got the Husqvarna pole saw. Um, I'm going to show you guys that today. That thing is awesome. I really like it a lot. Um, usually, you know, I've, I've always had the, um, you know, the 280 pole saws from Echo. Um, but I have a Husqvarna one that I'm trying out that they sent me. Um, so we're going to... I don't have both of them with me. I'm going to bring both of them with me one day um, and, and just do a comparison on it. Um, there's things that I like on the Echo better already. There's things that I like on the Husqvarna better already. So um, two really comparable saws. So um, we're going to check that out today and do some tree lifting. So all right, all right. Okay, guys, here's usually what I'll do. I'll usually pull up up underneath the, um, you know, the tree limbs that are hanging over. So I'll pull the truck up directly underneath it. That way I can pull saw and it just drops right into the truck. Easy start, man. Easy start. So, um, all right. So, how I do it is, if it clears the dump truck by a couple of feet, then that's that's usually pretty good. So, we're about we're sitting about 12 feet at that point.
So this is why I really need a chipper. I need a chipper really bad. Because we do, we lift trees all the times on these properties and it would just be so much, we could just fit so much more in. Yeah, it's quicker just to lop it off and just keep moving, but you know, you fill that dump truck up and we have a pretty big one. It's 18 feet, you know, by five feet, by seven feet. Um, and it fills up quick. So guys, this is the 525 PT 5S. That's what this pole saw is. Um, let you take a look at it right there. Let's see, can we focus? Focus, buddy. Come on, buddy. There you go. Um, that's what we got. This thing's, it's really nice. Um, it definitely feels really light uh, when you're running it. It, um, I do, I do like the, um, I do like the handle on the Echo. The, it's got a big loop handle that comes on it. I do actually like that better because the handle or the trigger is on the bottom side of the loop handle. So you're, the trigger is basically resting on your hand already as you're holding it, um, as opposed to holding it with a hand and having a finger out and having to pull the trigger on this. The telescoping adjust it, um, I like better on this for sure. So let's see, you guys see it right there? Um, the handle right there. So it's a twist and it comes in and out by that instead of like a wing nut, which is on the Echoes. Um, the head is, um, it's got a smaller gearbox system going on up here, but that really makes no difference. Um, I think that the Echo has a little bit more power to it. You know, but at the end of the day, we're using a pulse saw for, you know, limbs and things like that. We're not using a pulse saw to cut trees down. And if you are, then you shouldn't be doing that. And this is not what it's made for. You're really going to destroy that thing. Um, but anyways, you know, it's sufficient for what it does. It's, it's awesome. I love it. The, the feel and everything of it I like better than the Echo. Um, the overall like ergonomics of this I like better. Um, so, so far the trigger I like better on the Echo. The telescoping adjustment I like better on the Husqvarna. Um, and when it comes to, like I said, the, the, the power to cut through something, this does a good job. Um, the PT280 Echo has just a little bit more bite than this does. Um, but like I said, I, I don't mind it because we're just limbing off stuff. We're not cutting trees down with it. So that's what we have like, you know, uh, you know, Husqvarna chainsaws and Timberwolf pulp, you know, chainsaws from Echo. So that's, that's what we use. We use anything that works, man, anything, but it's all good stuff. It really is. It's all good stuff. A lot of guys are, oh, screw Echo and screw Husqvarna and screw steel. Dude, it's all good stuff. It really is. I started off doing lawns with the cheapest used beat up piece of crap homeowner edition at the time I thought, but come to realize that Echo actually doesn't make anything that's homeowner. Um, Echo equipment with a toggle switch, you know, on and off for the edger. I mean, you know, the back, everything was junk. And that got me through my first year of lawn maintenance. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then like, honestly for me, Husqvarna feels like it's more the refined, um, kind of, uh, new age, you know, looking equipment. So I love Husqvarna. I love their grays and the oranges and the, the way that these, um, their equipment is built just feels awesome. You know, Echo makes really good stuff. Their new line is really solid. Steel's always, you know, solid and, until you've had it for three months and you try and start it. Um, but anyways, um, they all make good stuff. I love steel. I love Husqvarna. I love Echo. I love Shindawa. All this stuff is good. It's just preference. And all of these brand wars are so stupid. They're so stupid. People go online and they're just like trashing other brands. It's okay to have an issue with something that you bought. That's not what I'm talking about. You can spend a lot of money. I mean, I bought X marks and 900 hours. The hydros blew the, the, the will. Um, everything just blew on it and it's a piece of junk, but I wasn't on like, oh, screw, you know, X mark. The one that I had sucked. You know, you have reps at places that are horrible that make your experience bad. Um, but, you know, when it comes to hand tools, man, I got to say that Husqvarna, Steel Echo, Shindawa, um, you know, Red Max, they, they, they make good stuff. It's all good. It's just, do you like the way this feels in your hands? Do you like the ergonomics? Do you like the weight of it? Do you like the distribution? That becomes personal preference, man. That's all. I love everything. I love everybody and everything. All right, so I wrapped that up. You guys just didn't need to see me sitting there trimming all of those 
branches, it all looks exactly the same. Um, what I do want to talk about though is quickly mention, um, you know, I was talking about the equipment and like all this stuff is good. Everything's good, man. Some stuff sucks. Some stuff, you know, works better in some areas of the country um, than others and things like that. But ultimately, you know, these major manufacturers, they all make some pretty good stuff. Um, but that leads me to what I'm excited about. We got less than two months for GIE, sucker. I can't wait for GIE, man. It's going to be so awesome. And Leah loves GIE, too. So that that's that's great. Let me turn this back down. I have a travel buddy for GIE um, since driving 11 hours. Why don't you fly? Because I don't want to get stuck there with no ride. I don't like that. Plus, I like driving. You know, the drive wasn't that bad. Um, you know, and you're going to spend a day traveling anyways. By the time you get to the airport, you know, flight, especially if it's a connecting flight and all that junk, I mean, you you spend most of the day traveling anyway. I might as well be in the comfort of our own vehicle and stop when we want to stop, eat when we want to eat, you know, all that stuff. Be able to take a nap if you want to take a nap. But GIE is coming soon. It's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be uh, even better than last year. Last year was the first time that we had ever gone. And, and um, just from being part of some more um, advocacies, I, I think, or, you know, just being in more advocate programs, um, I think it's going to be a little bit more fun this time. But even not being in them, um, it's still awesome, man. You know, last year we were um, advocate for Green Touch. Of course, we still are, um, and you know that that was the only affiliation we had, and it, and it was and it was awesome. I mean, it was so much fun. So um, this year, you know, we get to work with Husqvarna, Gravely, uh, a couple other people, and it's just going to be fun. Um, this time we got we got a uh, an apartment near 4th Street because you, you go if this is your first time going 4th Street man 4th Street live that's where it's at that's where you need to go every day after GIE and we decided to stay close there this time so yeah anyways I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna go work on getting the guys payroll and happy Friday suckers happy Friday Friday